Okay, on the sidelines of the Aquarius uh, Healthcare and Chemicals uh, Day, uh, I'm joined by Praful Bora. He tracks pharmaceutical very closely. Praful, thanks for speaking to Bloomberg Quint. Uh, firstly, let's just start with the basics. The fourth quarter numbers uh, just went by. Uh, what did you make of it? Uh, which were the top uh, performers? Which were the underperformers in the pharma space? So I think uh, it was a mixed response. Uh, we had some companies uh, like Torrent, uh, you know, Natco, Cadla. I think these companies posted good numbers. Uh, you know, but broadly the message is still that, you know, the large caps are still facing problems in the US. Uh, the pricing erosion is not not yet out. I mean, so, uh, you know, it is it is abated, but it is still not completely out. So probably in other two quarters, you know, we, we would see some sort of an impact. The the tone of the companies has, has uh, you know, normalized a bit. Uh, earlier they were speaking of very aggressive pricing erosion. But now I think they are talking of somewhere around 10-12 percent kind of a range. So I think that that is definitely abated. Uh, you know, so that's I would I would see that as a broader message from this uh, quarter's results. Okay. Uh, while most of them did man manage to indicate that you know there will be pricing pressure, they also came to down to the fact that you know probably growth will come back to them. Like Sun did indicate that they will grow. A couple of other companies like Cadla indicated they will grow. On that trend, do you believe that uh, there is more optimism that the pharma companies have and probably FI19 would be a better year for uh, pharma investors? See, the only green shoot that I see in the US right now is that a lot of companies have started rationalizing the portfolios, you know, and that includes the larger names like Teva, uh, Mylan, so to say. So I think to that extent, some companies will benefit. Uh, you know, the fact that uh, a lot of companies also had a very low base last year, okay, those companies would see some growth. Okay, companies which had a high base, uh, you know, for example, Orbindo, so to say, or maybe Cadla, they would probably be, you know, flattish to a slightly mm. negative kind of growth is, that is our expectation. Okay, so uh, going ahead, uh, which are the companies that, you know, you're recommending to your clients that, you know, these are the companies that you should watch out in FY19, these are the ones that will do really well? So basically, the, uh, you know, the, the uh, portfolios where still there is a lot of concentration which is there, uh, you know, we would want to avoid those kind of names uh, and that would probably include all your large cap names. So your Dr. Eddies and uh, Lupin. So we are more of a whole kind of a mm. rating, uh, you know, on these stocks because these stocks have fallen. Mm. Uh, I think some of the smaller names can do relatively better, uh, you know, so to say. So basically, uh, you know, names like Natco, uh, Ipka is a turnaround story. There's a lot of operating mm. leverage at play, which mm. can come off, which can, which, which, which can really play. So I think that's those are the probably probably the names that uh, you know investors should look on uh, look at from a uh, slightly near term perspective. What's your view on Sun Pharma? Do you see signs of Sun Pharma reversing? And let's say if uh, uh, they have priced in the halal resolution in the second half, uh, uh, if that happens, will that be a game changer, or that's pretty much priced in now? So I would see, uh, you know, Sun Pharma's earnings are uh, more, more than doubling, uh, you know, as per most analyst uh, mm. estimates. So I think a large part of the street is, a large part of that is being baked in, uh, the improvement from Halol. Uh, what can probably surprise uh, positively is the uh, ramp up uh, in the speciality portfolio. But but the only, uh, uh, you know, fallback here is basically uh, in 2021, the largest port product, which is Opsarica, Epsorica goes generic in 2021. So, you know, at best, if you, even if your specialty portfolio grows to a, say, $400 billion portfolio, you know, you would see a lot of negating effect coming from Epsorica in that. So, uh, whether growth will be there, you know, I have my doubts. Uh, you spoke about that growth will come in in the smaller companies. You spoke about Natco. Uh, you spoke about, uh, you know, other companies that, uh, especially Ipka Labs. Uh, what's the growth driver there? What, what are you factoring in there? So Ipka, uh, you know, if you if you followed the company, uh, they've seen they've seen a lot of uh, problems in the institutional business uh, in the past, the U.S. Mm. business because of the import alerts. Now U.S. business uh, is you know they they have completed the resolution, they have reinvited the FDA uh, for a reinspection. You know, if that gets cleared, then you will see U.S. business again picking up, and that will drive a lot of operating leverage because still even now. Uh, a lot of fixed cost is getting absorbed uh, you hmm. know, in, the, in the facilities. So once you have the revenues, uh, you know, probably that will start coming in. Secondly, even on the institutional business side, uh, uh, they have been requalified by WHO for, a, for hmm. the recent tender. Uh, they were earlier debarred. Uh, so I think that, that's probably going you know, to drive some revenue growth as well. And Natco? See, Natco, uh, Natco is a story from a... a so basically, Nantco, uh, Nantco's growth drivers have been Copaxon, Tamiflu in the past. I think Copaxon, they would continue to do well. Tamiflu may probably come off because of, uh, it, it's like a seasonal product which yes. they have. Uh, the next big product that they have is Revlimid, hmm. uh, and which is which is going to come up from 22 onwards. Okay, So till that time, I think uh, on the domestic front, 
uh, they would continue to do well. On the US front, their revenues would probably be flattish to slight growth. Okay, but I think uh, they have they have a lot of margin levers because a lot. Of, see, the last year's profits uh, from time flow will also reflect in this year. Okay, uh, among the companies, if you track and have a view, what went wrong with companies like you know Granule, Strides, uh, uh, Glenmark? All of them have come off significantly. And the numbers were really poor. What went wrong with them? See, I think one key issue with these companies is the execution. I think uh, see, th these guys are all focused. Everyone who's focused on US uh, and they do not, which, who do not have a scale, I think those guys are going to suffer. Mm. Uh, probably because, uh, see, ultimately what has happened is the customers have consolidated. The uh, the five customers are now three, mm -hmm. right? So they are basically squeezing, uh, you know, squeezing out all the generic manufacturers. And if you don't have a wide portfolio, you really don't have the negotiating power. Mm. So you know, smaller companies with a very small portfolio like Strides, Granules, all these guys, you know, probably they're going to suffer. I mean, they they. They won't be able to reach that scale because of their, uh, you know, the lack of depth of uh, portfolio. Okay, uh, and my final question is, uh, what's your pecking order? What's your top large cap uh, bet that you're playing on in the pharma space, and what's the top uh, lagard that you feel that will be there in the large cap space? And similar for mid cap, the top pick and and the worst performer you believe that See, could be. We we are not really pushing large cap at this point of time because we think uh, there is still some pressure. Okay. Uh, you know, if I have to really make a choice, uh, I think Adla would be one name which I would probably uh, pick up because I think FI19 they will still grow because of Asic All HDO launch. Mm. So I think that will be one name if I have to really pick. Uh, when amongst the mid caps, I think Natco Pharma. Uh, if someone wants to play an operating leverage story, maybe Ipka maybe. Okay, many thanks, Praful. We leave it at that. Uh, that was Praful Bora, the pharma analyst uh, on the sidelines of the Aquarius Healthcare and Chemicals Day.